on the track to qualify is Richard Petty of Randleman, North Carolina, the winningest stock car driver of all times. Five point six three one, a hundred and ninety seven point two three six miles per hour on his first lap. Five point four five one, a hundred and ninety eight point zero one two. Meet Richard Petty, 33 years old, handsome, and successful. Richard resides at Randleman, North Carolina, where he met and married his childhood sweetheart, Linda. Richard is the father of three children, a son, Kyle, and two daughters, Sharon and Lisa. The Plymouth Ace has enjoyed 110 Grand National victories. Now turn to page one, and let's meet Richard Petty. The first picture shows Richard as being a family man. For information on this subject, let's talk to Linda Petty, Richard's wife. Yes, Richard is a good family man. He spends as much time as possible with the family. He enjoys home-cooked meals, working together on family projects, and answering all the fan mail. He also tries to spend as much time as possible with the children. Richard is a very considerate person, a good father, and a good husband. And he's real easy to get along with. As a family, uh, I would say that there's just not anything we do that we don't enjoy doing together. The children are older, and I've, since last year I've been able to travel more with Richard. We enjoy going to the races because this is, this is our life. This is the way we live. The children enjoy it. They enjoy um, making new friends. And the excitement of being around the racetrack, and naturally when we win, it's always happy for everybody. This is a good time especially. They enjoy seeing the different places that we go to. I think it uh, broadens their knowledge of all the, all the places that are around that we do get to visit. They enjoy staying in the motels, especially with the ones that have the nice swimming pools where they can spend most of the day in the pool. When school starts, it does make a difference because I'm confined to stay home with the children and we don't get to go as much. So that's why during the summer months we do take advantage of spending all the time we can with him. Since his work takes him away from home so much, if we don't uh, go with him, then we don't get to see him as much as we'd like to. Now to explain the pictures at the bottom of the page, beginning left to right, we next meet Richard Petty as a businessman. Well, this is Pete Hamilton, and I drive the number two Petty uh, race car. And I think a good illustration of Richard Petty's fairness as far as a business person and also as a race driver is the fact that oftentimes this year uh, I've had the opportunity to qualify a little bit faster than Richard has. 
and uh, never once has Richard ever said to me, well, I think maybe uh, I ought to drive that car or, or something like that. He's always been able to uh, uh, just uh, help me out as much as he could at the racetrack, and even if we have qualified a little bit faster, uh, uh, his help has been awful important in, in uh, getting us to go even faster during the race. I think another illustration of Richard Petty's fairness on the racetrack can be shown that uh, during a race, oftentimes one car does run a little bit faster than the other, and in some cases this has been my car. Any time that I have come up behind Richard and have been running a little bit faster, he's always pulled down for me because we do run a team car effort and kind of let the faster car go on by and, and go as fast as the car is capable of running. We next meet Richard Petty, the race driver, a person I'm sure that we're all more familiar with. Richard has been driving a race car for 12 years. He has won 110 Grand National races, more than any other stock car driver. His record includes most wins in a career, most wins in one season with 27, most consecutive wins with 10, and the best average finish. He has also been Grand National Champion twice. And now the last picture on page one introduces Richard as a Christian man. Yes, Richard is a good Christian man. He reads the Bible very often. We read the Bible to the children, read them Bible stories. We try to teach them to... Uh, appreciate the things around them and, and to know where these things come from. We try to teach them respect above all else. Respect to their selves, to other people, and to the things around them, which I think, and Richard also feels this way, that this is important because so many young people now, this is the one thing they lack, and this is respect. I don't think I've ever heard him in the years that we have been married say anything bad about anybody and this is what another thing that he tries to teach the children to just do to other people as you would have them uh, do to you think good thoughts about people never never look for the worst in them always look for something good in everybody uh, he tries to feel this way and and do this way with his uh, employees he tries to set up a a good relationship with them and have them not think of him uh, necessarily as the boss man, but as another employee. Uh, he wants to have their respect to where if they need something, if they're in trouble or they need somebody to talk to, that they can come to, to him. And I have heard him say time and again that he never asked anybody that works for him to do anything that he would not do himself. He tries to be fair on the racetrack and off of the racetrack. I do think that Richard is a, a fair person. He's also a very good sport about things. And this is one thing that I have tried to stress to our son, that if he can just grow up to just be half the sport about things and have the attitude about things that his father does, I think he'll, he'll grow up to be a good man. These are a few things that I do think make Richard a truly Christian man. And now for the introduction that we've all been waiting for, I present Richard Petty himself. Thank you, Clay. Now please turn to page two. At the top of the page is the equipment we think it takes to win races. With all the cars and the trucks and everything, we figure that going with two cars to the racetrack is somewhere about $100,000 worth of equipment just to get all this stuff to and from the racetrack. At the top of the page, picture number one is a picture of my tow truck. Picture number two is a picture of Pete Hamilton's tow truck. Picture number three is a camper bus that would take the most of the super speedway races. Picture number four is a pit crew bus where most of the boys ride to and from the races. Picture number five is a picture of our new tow trucks, and we have two of these right now. Picture number six is the boys loading a shop truck. Picture number seven is a picture of number 43 in action. At the bottom of the page is a picture of the main shop with a couple of boys getting the car ready for the races. At the top of page three, picture one, is a picture of the race car on the chassis machine. This is where we start with the cars. It takes us about six or eight weeks to build a car. And... Uh, it's just a whole lot of work. 
Picture number two is John Valley and Joe Milliken getting the engine ready to take down to the main shop to be installed in the race car. Picture three is a picture of the whole Petty Enterprises. This has took us 20 years and uh, a lot of sweat to get this place. Picture number four is just years of experience, all the junk thrown out the back. Picture number five is John Coble running the engine on the dyno. Uh, we test all our engines on the dyno to check for horsepower and make sure that the engines don't leak and uh, no oil or no water runs out of them. Picture six is Danny Holliday doing a little body work on my race car. Picture seven is just an overall picture of the main shop. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Petty has a 38 second lead, but he must make a pit stop. The question is, can he still keep the lead? Petty has been given the signal to pit, and he's heading down pit road. Richard, how do you possibly change two tires, take on 22 gallons of gas, a quart of oil, water, and do it in 20 seconds? It's all teamwork. Let's turn to page four and meet the crew. Picture one is Alex Yoder, who works in the body shop. Picture two is Chuck Gay, who works in the build-up shop and who also helps on Pete's pit crew. Picture three is Ralph McNabb, who works in the build that shop and is also in this picture is doing a little sandblast. Picture four is Duck Holder. He does a lot of parts running and works on my pit crew is putting the gas in. Picture five is Junior Fields. He works in the build up shop and he is a jack man on Pete Hamilton's crew. Picture six is Larry Sales who Works in the build-up shop, and he also does most of the rear end work on the car, and he gases on Pete Hamilton's car. At the bottom of the page, picture one is Danny Holliday, who works in the body shop, and who also carries tires on car 43. Picture two is a picture of Richie Bars, who is a front-end man on Pete Hamilton's car. He does most of the setup work with it, and he also changes right rear tires uh, on Pete's car. Picture three is Leslie Bars, who works in my pit crew, as carries the jack. Picture four is Randy Owens. Picture five is Wade Thornburg. He does most of the front end work on both of the cars, and who also changes right rear tires on my car. Picture six is Maurice Petty, who does all the engine work for both cars, and who changes the right front tire on Pete's car. Picture seven is a picture of Dale Inman, who does the overall work on both cars and coordinates all the boys to do the work. Uh, he also changes the right front tire on my car. Picture eight is David Ellington. Picture nine is Louise Laughlin, who works in the main office. Picture 10 is Leonard Owens. Picture 11 is Bottle Milliken. Picture 12 is... Roger Watson, who works in the engine room, and he usually goes to the races with us and does my engine work. Picture 13 is Frank Ruth, who also works in the engine room. Picture 14 is Martha Jane Bunkemeyer, who is the receptionist in the office. 
All in all, we have 25 or 30 people that it takes to win races as we run them. The background picture on four and five is a picture of me getting ready to start a race. A lot of the people have asked me why come I run a rag in my mouth, but uh, the reason I do is because it keeps my mouth from getting dry out during the race. And uh, it's something every time we make a pit stop, they just give me a new wet rag, and it's usually good for about 100 miles. Beginning at the bottom of page five is a lot of the safety features that have been developed over the last eight to ten years in racing. Uh, I'll start with picture number one. This shows the roll bars in the car that I wrecked at Darlington. This was taken after the wreck, and the car turned over three or four times, and as you can see, the cars tore all the pieces, but the roll bars are still in one piece. Picture number two is the seat belts and the shoulder harness, and this is what it takes to hold you in when you do have a wreck like picture number one. Picture number three is just the boots that I wear all the time. Uh, keeps the, my ankles from getting so hot, and a lot of the boys complain about a lot of heat in the floorboards. Picture number four is a picture of myself, naturally, but it's just a picture of the helmet to show the safety features of the helmet. Picture number five is a new interline tire that Goodyear has developed, and here it is uh, laid out in front of just a regular tire. Picture number six is a safety bladder gas tank. It holds 22 gallons of gas, and the object in the front of it is a valve so that when the car turns over, the gas won't run out on the racetrack. Picture number seven is the rear of the Superbird with a stabilizer, and this is used in holding the car straight and also holding it on the ground. It speeds up to 200 miles an hour. Picture number eight shows that the doors are bolted and welded shut in case you do have a bad accident, the doors won't come off the car. Picture number nine is a picture of a official checking the car out before he turns me loose on a racetrack. We've had some kind of trouble and he's checking to make sure that it's safe to go by. Picture number 10 shows the inner line and inside the tire. Picture number 11 is, shows the seat that we built spatially for me and it fits me real close and uh, in order to have it fit this good, it makes it a lot safer because I can stay right behind the steering wheel and do a job of driving. Picture number 12 is the fire extinguishers, which we have two of them in each car. And now turn to page 6. Page 6. At the top of the page, picture number one is a picture of Pete Hamilton's car as it was when he won the race at Daytona. Picture number two is a picture of Pete Hamilton as he looked before he won the race at Daytona Beach. Picture number three is a picture of my father and myself at Daytona Beach in 1960, and I run third and he run fourth. Picture number one at the bottom of the page is a picture of Lee Petty, who is a car owner and as owner of Petty Enterprises. Uh, he done a lot of racing for a lot of years, and uh, I think he's third in overall wins with 54 wins. He won three championships, and uh, we always thought that he was the best driver going, and uh, we hope he thinks the same of us. Picture number two is Maurice Petty, my brother. He builds all the engines for both race cars. He does uh, the chief mechanic work on Pete Hamilton's car. And uh, he overall sees a lot of other things about the shop to take care of getting to and from the races and making sure that we do have a winning car. Picture number three is Dale Inman, who is a first cousin of ours, and uh, he's been working with Morris and myself for about 15 years. He's a chief mechanic on my car, and he does most of the setup work on both cars as far as getting the car chassis worked out and all this. And, he works in the shop and pretty well takes care of all both cars as far as getting them ready for the races. Probably looking at these three people that I've just talked about, has probably got more racing experience than anybody in Grand National Racing. We've all been together for about 15 years, and we've run all kinds of tracks and run about everywhere and, and learn a lot of things about each other and about a lot of race car drivers, and uh, we really know how to work together. Uh, I, you listen to them and they listen to me and with all the experience that the boys got behind them and 
with three or four heads working together, it's so much better than one. And uh, I don't believe that I would ever been near this far if I hadn't been for these three people that I've just named. Picture number four is a picture taken of me before I won the race at North Carolina Motor Speedway at Rockingham. In the center of the page is a 1970 Plymouth Superbird built by Petty Enterprises. This is our latest race car, and we've been real fortunate to win four or five super speedway races with it so far this year. Beginning at the bottom of page seven is pictures of the cars that were built and maintained by Petty Enterprises over the last 12 years. It's a picture of the 59s, 364 models. And now turn to page eight. Picture number one is a picture of Maurice and myself standing beside the 65 model. Picture number two is a 66 model. Picture number three is a 67 model. Picture number four is at Daytona Beach beside the 68 model. Picture number five is a 69 model. And in the center of the page is a picture of Pete Hamilton who drives a second Petty Plymouth. He's from Massachusetts. He's come down here in about 1967. He'd won a sportsman championship. In 68, he ran some Grand National, and he was Rookie of the Year. In 69, he ran the GT circuit. And at the beginning of 1970, we needed looking around and needed a driver, and it looked like Pete Hamilton was the man for the job. And so far, he's won three super speedway races, and it looks like we picked the right man. And looking up at the top of page nine is a picture of my family, which really I'm the proudest of this than any records I could ever see it. Uh, these people really have to put up with a lot because I'm gone away from home a lot. Uh, I come in at all hours of the day and night, and they really, really enjoy racing. And this is uh, part of the deal that makes me be so happy in racing is because my family does enjoy it. And uh, in the summer, the kids go with me, my wife goes with me all during the summer to all the races, and then when school starts, they have to go back to school. But they really enjoy about three months on the road, and uh, this is one thing that the reason that they can really tolerate racing is because that they do get to do a lot of traveling and be with me in the summer. Uh, first picture is a picture of my wife, Linda. Then there's Sharon standing in the background, who is nine years old, and there's Lisa in the front, who is five years old, and Kyle, he is now 10 years old. And at the bottom of the page is a picture of two more families that really have to put up with a whole lot with all the racing that's going on. On the left is Mary and Dale Inman, who is, like I say before, is the chief mechanic on my car. And to the right is Morris and Patricia Petty and their children, who is really the chief mechanic of the whole outfit. And now please turn to page 10. Picture number one at the top of the page is the cars lined up right before the race gets started. You can see that uh, we have something over the windshield to keep the heat out of the driver's compartment, and also they have something over the radiator there to keep the car from cooling off too much because it's usually a couple hours from the time they put them on the line till the race starts. Picture number two is just a picture of the crowd and the car sitting at the same place. Picture number three is a picture of Pete Hamilton's car right before the race starts. Picture number four is getting ready for the pace lap with Pete and myself in the car. Picture number five is the pits being set up, and you, as you can see, they have about 20 tires for each car. The crew is already ready. They got the tires up against the fence, and you can see the, my car running in the background. Picture number six is a pit crew watching the race and making sure that if I do have to make a pit stop that's unscheduled, they will be ready. Picture number seven is I head down pit road getting ready to make a pit stop. Picture number eight, I'm in the pits and they're doing their job. The man's putting in the gas, they're changing the tire, and we have a NASCAR official there to make sure there's not but five men over the wall. Picture number nine is Alex Schroeder giving Pete Hamilton the board while he's still on the racetrack and I'm still in the pits. And picture number 10, I'm getting ready to leave the pit. And in the middle of the page is me in action at 
Rockingham Motor Speedway, and as you can see, I have a mask on my face. This is something I've just started doing in the last four or five months, and uh, I found out that if I wet this rag and keep it over my mouth, it keeps from drying me out, especially when you run four or five hundred miles. Now I turn to page 12. At the top of the page is a picture of my father's car underneath this number 73. This happened in 1961 at Daytona Beach, and it all but ended my father's career. He was in the hospital for about six months, and at that particular time, he was a chief driver, and I was just learning. And after he had this accident, he was in the hospital for six months, and I really started doing the, the main part of the driving then, and after he got out of the hospital, he drove uh, maybe a half a dozen races and said he didn't enjoy it anymore, and so then he started working on the cars and just left the driving up to me. At the bottom of page 12, picture number one. I'm making a pit stop, and there's an official checking to make sure that Dale Inman gets all the lugs on the tires. If uh, you leave five lugs is what you're supposed to have, and if you leave one off, they don't let you go out. So there's always a NASCAR official in all the pits to make sure that everybody gets everything done to their car. Picture number two is just a picture from the back of the car showing the stabilizer and showing the rest of the cars lined up for the race. Picture number three shows Pete Hamilton's car with a spoiler underneath the front end. The spoiler is for safety to keep the front end of the car down. The red on the front of Pete Hamilton's car is to make sure that when he will come down pit road they can tell the difference between my car and Pete's because both of them are blue and both of them are identical all except for the red mark. And you can also see in the background my car running on the racetrack. Picture number four, Pete Hamilton has just made a pit stop and is getting ready to pull back on the racetrack. Page 13 at the bottom of the page, picture number one shows getting in and out of the car. Uh, this is that the doors are welded and bolted and we have to go in and out of the windows. Picture number two shows me in the press box after I won a race at Rockingham. Uh, you can see the way I look. I look like I've lost a little bit of weight. It was real hot that day, and on a big race like this, uh, you'll lose from 10 to 12 pounds uh, just during the race. Picture three is a picture at Daytona Beach in 1968. Uh, I had a little trouble with the top blowing up, and as you can see, there's an NASCAR official right up on the car with me to make sure that it is safe for the car to go back out. Picture number four is still at Daytona Beach, and I'm trying to get the top knocked down where we can wire it down to the roll bars. Picture number five was taken in 1964 at Charlotte, North Carolina, where I sit on the pole. Now please turn to page 14. In the center of the pictures, you can see that the car is jacked up on stands. It's probably the day before the race, and this is really the only time that a driver gets a chance to relax. The crews don't get a chance to relax because they're busy going through the car, getting it ready and making last-minute preparations. Here you can see me sitting on some tires, just sort of uh, spending time doing nothing, and this is really the, about the only time that at the racetrack that we do really get to relax. At the bottom of the page, picture number one shows me in the shop drilling some holes in the car. Sometimes I have time for other things. Picture number two, I'm modeling clothes. In picture number three, I'm in the winter circle collecting a trophy at Darlington, South Carolina. Picture number four, uh, probably that the man just asked me what happened to the car, and it's one of those days that I didn't win, and uh, this is the expression I had. Across to picture number five shows the 1968, and we had just won the 67 championship, and this is the boys that was in the crew, and they're all collecting their rewards. Picture number six shows Maurice and my father and myself getting all the trophies and coats and TVs and everything that you get for winning a championship. Picture number seven shows Ronnie Householder, who is head of all Chrysler Racing. And picture shows me accepting a trophy at a banquet in New York. Picture number eight is a picture in the winter circle with Kyle Petty and Sharon Petty and myself winning the race at Martinsville, Virginia. 
Picture number nine shows us winning one of the races at Darlington, South Carolina. Please turn to page 16. Picture one at the top of the page is I'm signing a boy's arm. I've signed coats and books, and uh, here this boy just wanted his arm signed. Picture two is a picture of Ronnie Householder and myself. Picture three is the main shop, and the boys are taking a break. Picture four is a picture of the motor room where they have three or four engines already built. Picture five is taking a Boy Scout jamboree. Picture six is Ray Pike and Tom Vassell, who are my business managers. Picture seven is my father and myself and a Goodyear representative. Picture eight is after I had a little rough up on the racetrack. Picture nine was taken at Darlington, and I'm talking to ABC TV. Page 17, picture number one, is the boys have got the broom out, and this is where I'm supposed to stop on a pit stop. Picture two is 1964 at Daytona Beach during a pit stop. Picture three is taken at Darlington, and they're coming around to change the tires, and the man gives them the okay, so I guess they went back and didn't change them. Picture four, they're changing the left rear tire of my car. Picture five, everything must not have been going too good. I must be talking to somebody about something. Picture number six is just to look under the hood of our new race cars. And in the middle of the page is a picture of the 1964 Plymouth, and this was taken at Bristol, and I think I'd led the race about two-thirds of the way and blew an engine about three or four laps to go, and you see I got a smile on my face, but that's because of the fans, because uh, they really give you a good welcome, even though you didn't win the race, they know you tried, and uh, these are the people that's paying the bill, and as long as they're happy, I'm happy. And now going back to picture six, Listen to the engine crank up. Listen to it out. And now listen to it rev up. Now please turn to page 18. At the bottom of the page is a picture of number 43. This is a number that I've run for 12 years, and the reason we chose this number was that my father run number 42, and we just did him one better. Picture number two was taken in front of Mount Lebanon Church. Picture number three is a picture of me talking to Bob Pretty, president of TGR Recording. This is a company that produces book and record. Picture number four is a picture of myself and my boy, and I, right now I'm in the process of building him a Pinewood Derby car. Across the page is picture number one is the whole family just sitting there watching TV. Picture number two is a picture of the first race car that my father ever owned. As you can see, we started a relationship with Plymouth 21 years ago. Picture number three is a picture of my wife and myself and my little girl, and we're answering the fan mail. And this is a picture of my mother and my father. These are the people that guided me that have been really the ones that have kept me going. I know my mother has really lived a hard life because she ran around with my father in all the racing years that he ran, and then he had a bad accident, and she stayed with him in the hospital and, and really looked after him, and... Then when she come home, she had to worry about my brother and myself, and uh, she was really the one that has kept up with the money and kept up with the business. While my father and my brother and myself were out on the road, she usually kept all the bills paid and kept everybody working. And uh, I'd have to say that she was probably the guiding light between uh, my father and my brother and myself to keep peace in the family because when you get three grown men together, uh, everybody's got a difference of opinion, and there's got to be somebody there to keep everybody happy. 
And this is a picture of my father, who I guess is probably, the way I figure, is the best race car driver there ever was, but uh, everybody has his own opinion. Uh, he had won 54 races when he quit running. He won three championships. Uh, up to that time, he'd won more money than anybody else, and uh, when he did quit, he had 11 years in of running that uh, nobody could even come close to matching the record that he had. And uh, like I say, he was my guiding light. He was the one that advised me on what to do and what not to do. Uh, he's been the one that has kept us straight in uh, later years, although he's quit racing and really quit messing around the shop a whole lot. When my brother and myself get in trouble, uh, he's the one that we turn to, and he's usually got pretty well the right answer, and so far it's been usually the right answer, and we've come out really on top. And now take a tip from Richard Petty. Drive carefully. Fasten your seat belts. Turn your lights on early at night. Watch out for the other driver. The life you save may be your own. And last, inside the back cover, we have pictures of the 1971 Plymouth. For more information about these great cars, visit your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. In 1971, this is Richard Petty saying, let Plymouth come through for you. Chrysler Plymouth! Coming through, Chrysler Plymouth, coming through, Chrysler Plymouth, with something new, Chrysler Plymouth.